the others for inviting me. Um, it's a, it's a, an honor to be here. Um, it's interesting that it's I was presented and I was not asked as a Lisbon-based artist since this is a conference on transvisuality and all artists nowadays are actually between. You know, you see the curriculums and it's always lives and works between London and Lisbon, between New York and Berlin, and between San Francisco and Los Angeles and so forth. Uh, there are no artists who are actually based anywhere, although they are, but so it's, I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, the next point is it's a bit um, complicated to speak about uh, uh, after Nicholas uh, because Nicholas was so so much about uh, contemporaneity about what is happening in the, in the world uh, today politically and and so forth and here I am to talk about boring old uh, Holocaust but um, I could speak about the brexit I don't think it's going to happen actually. Uh, but that's just my my own thought. Um, but I would I would I will speak about images uh, from the past because I th I think and maintain that they are images from the present and um, and also from the future. Although it will not, um, I'm not saying the Holocaust or anything like it will happen again. It will not. But something similar could happen any time, and is happening all the time in different. Um, possibilities and in multiple uh, ways. It's not equal, and it's not either similar, but it's equal, equally threatening to, to humankind. And when I speak about uh, the, the Holocaust, or when I do work about the Holocaust, I'm doing this because I'm closer to it, uh, because of, uh, of my uh, family history. But I also think the Holocaust contains everything in it. It contains... Um, Yesterday it contains today, it contains colonialism, it contains racism, it contains any uh, violence against uh, minorities, being uh, blacks, Jews, homosexuals, whatever, uh, we can fit it into the Holocaust. All, um, all kind of violences are present in one or another uh, corner of the history of uh, what happened between 1933 and 1940. Five. I'm, I'm going to, sp to speak about, I'm very interested in, in, in where do images go after they die. And we can argue if images do die or if they don't die. And in a world, as was said before, where more and more images are created at every, every second, I do think images die. And, and this goes a, 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 a bit against what uh, Warburg um, Warburg's theory is that images do reappear, and that is also still very valid and, and true. But of, a lot of images are garbage, and we, ne we need to be more and more uh, aware of that. So when we think of, um, of photography, and I'm also, or more speaking also of photography as, as an art, which used to be an art form, I think it's, it's dying, actually, if it's not dead uh, already. And this coming from a photographer, I know it sounds... But when I, when I spoke at the, at the consortium at the summer school two years ago or three years ago, I think I finished my, my, my presentation with the words that what I really think you must do as a photographer is not to photograph, is to think. And, 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 and this is the role of the photographer nowadays, or at least that's, that's how, how I see it. Um, and I, should, I should start with, a, with a, something uh, Italo Cavino wrote in 1958, where he said, perhaps true total photography is a pile of fragments of private images against decreased background of massacres and coronations. Uh, and, 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 and I kind of start from that. All my, my work is about that, is where the, the coronations and the massacres meet uh, the history of my family, where they meet private uh, weddings or private stories. Uh, and some of you might know my very early film I did on the Jewish refugees who passed through Lisbon, among which was my own uh, family, my grandparents. and and. And in the end, it's because of that, it's because of what happened in Germany, it's because of Hitler that they stayed in, in Lisbon and I was born here. So it's thanks to Hitler that you're listening to me today. 
uh, although you know we we can extrapolate all these consequences and all these uh, forever and ever, but it's still um, I think it's still meaningful to think about that how our histories are connected with world history. So the more we are, the more we think politics do not uh, touch us, the the wronger the, we are, the more mistaken we are. If we think we're not touched by something uh, President Obama decides in the, White, in the White House, and it seems it's only for Americans, we are wrong. It's going to affect us uh, sooner uh, or later. If we think Brexit is about Europe, and we are, live in Asia or in the United States, so it's not going to affect us, it's wrong, it's going to affect all of us. So it will affect our private uh, life experiences, our private stories and our private memories for, for better or for worse. And, uh, and in, in that sense, I've been working, uh, and this exhibition was an exhibition at, uh, at the Museo do Chiado here in Lisbon, the Contemporary Art Museum. And it, and it was a, a, a larger show, and um, it included objects and books and a long film, uh, almost five hours long, about, uh, not about, but around Theresienstadt, uh, Theresien, uh, a special concentration camp in the Czech Republic. But I'm not going to go into that. I'm only speaking about what, I, what was the third floor of the, of the show, and it's what I called uh, constellations, uh, a group of works based on uh, archival images and on the works of uh, the German writer W.G. Sebald uh, on Austerlitz, his last book and his only uh, novel, and uh, a crossing with uh, Georges Perec, a French author, uh, and his uh, memory, um, W or the memory of a childhood. They're both uh, authors from the same generation, although uh, Zibald was uh, German, uh, Catholic, or at least from a, a Catholic family, and Perec was French and from a Jewish family. His mother died uh, in Auschwitz, uh, supposedly, and his father died earlier uh, fighting, for, uh, fighting against the Germans for the French army. Uh, both his parents had immigrated from um, from Poland. So Perec is actually a transliteration, transforming of the name Peretz in uh, in Polish and made it into French, which sounds like a Breton name. And Perec always used to joke about that uh, that his name sounded more French than than he ever was, in fact. Uh, so as you can see, it's it starts with this. Uh, constellations or visual maps um, or tableau in the sense of uh, the artist who puts uh, a lot of images on a, on a table and, um, and, and, and tries to compare them, to arrange them, to um, put them in, in some kind of order, which again it has a lot to do with, uh, with Warburg obviously. And this also has to do, I think, uh, with, the with the progression from the analog uh, age to the digital age, where now in the digital age, uh, I think we rarely see uh, more than one image because we see screens. We see a screen and there is one image. And we rarely see the multiplication of images. We rarely have more than one image in front of, of our eyes. We don't have, or perhaps it's more easy to to explain with, with film when before editing a film you had the, the film print so you could see all the images or a portion of all the images. Now when you're editing a film in a, in a, on a platform like Final Cut or Premiere, you're always seeing one, one image. One, the chronology is, is always your focus on that and you can pull back and see another image but you never see actually more than one image. So you don't have the idea of how Im images work together and if they can work together or if they struggle with each other and, 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 and so forth. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going through views of the show and then I'm going to go into, into, into panels. And like I said, this is uh, based on, on, on both texts, on Austerlitz and, um, and, and uh, W or the memory of a childhood, which again for me it's 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 uh, defying or it's um, I'm, I'm questioning that we're more and more uh, seeing images and less and less reading books 
uh, or reading the press or whatever, reading in general. And by we, I don't say probably the people in this room, but <laughs> there are other people out there. Um, so I'm also trying here to uh, translate images, uh, to translate text into, into images, as we will see. For example, in these panels, and uh, it's six panels, is the whole uh, Austerlitz book by Zebaut transformed into images, meaning all visual references that Zebaut uses, and he uses a lot, are translated into images, so that theoretically you could read the book following the path on the images. And if you know the book, you know how to follow the path. And sometimes you get lost, it's a maze, because the book, Austerlitz, is also uh, a maze, and he goes uh, back and forth uh, in time, in space, the book starts uh, where it ends. In, um, it starts in Antwerp, but, uh, but he goes to the fortress in Brandok, and that's exactly where the book ends. In the fun, I mean, I'm going fast through this, because if I would go into this, we'll stay here after, until after lunch. Um, the book, for example, starts with a picture of, um, of the eyes of an owl, and the same picture, this, 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 the, the owl is, one, uh, is, a, is the statue, a little statue that is on above the door of the crematorium in Terezin, uh, where the book almost finishes. So he's, he's always making, and for, for the people who know his work, he had done more literally in, in Rings of Saturn, the book before, which is a walk through um, an area in, uh, in England where you can feel the walks through, this, through, through his footpaths, but also through the stories. In, in, in Austerlitz, he does exactly the same through the images and, uh, and through the words. Uh, going back, going forward, um, getting dead people to be alive, getting live people to be dead, and so forth and so forth. The story is all about uh, Mr. Austerlitz, who is looking for his identity. He, was, uh, he grew up in Wales, um, and then he suddenly finds out, and, uh, but he doesn't remember, that he uh, came on, a, on the kinder transport, the transports from, of Jewish children from, um, from Prague. Uh, to, the, to, to England and was adopted by this um, Wales uh, preacher. So the book is a search for identity, uh, but it's also a book about time and about photography. This is the first hundred pages of, uh, of Austerlitz translated into, into images. Uh, and, and, and there are multiple paths. And I'm not, obviously I'm not going to go into each of the images. It doesn't make I mean, it won't make sense, and we could be here for hours. But I mean, you, you can you can see Fred Astaire over there. Uh, Fred Astaire, uh, or, uh, original name, uh, his his father's name was Austerlitz. Austerlitz obviously is connected with um, with the uh, Napoleon's uh, battle. Uh, so, in 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 a way, it is the start of Europe. Um, of, of, of an, an idea of, uh, of Europe. Uh, Austerlitz is obviously also uh, a word game with, uh, with Auschwitz. Many people thought the book was directly about Auschwitz when they saw the, the title Austerlitz, um, in the same manner that uh, in, in, uh, when, he, when, uh, when Austerlitz, the, the character, goes to Marimbad, there are springs in Marimbad called Auschwitz, uh, so Zebal hints at that, saying this is where the the fat middle class used to go to to get thinner, and uh, Marimbad was mainly used by the Jewish aristocracy in the 1920s. Uh, Franz Kafka wa was there. You see Kafka also here because in a, in one of his stories there is someone called uh, named Austerlitz. Um, but Zebald is very often playing uh, at, at, with these uh, word games. But the word games are not innocent. Uh, like I said, the, the exhibition had also this film about Theresienstadt, Theres uh, now Theresien, and before Theresien in the, in the Czech Republic. Uh, and Theresienstadt was uh, a specific concentration camp where the first people were actually invited to go there, elderly Jews from uh, Berlin. Uh, and then Hamburg, 
and and they were kind of invited to a place called Theresienstadt, but they all heard Theresienbad, which is a spa town in, in Austria. So people arrived in Theresienstadt looking for the, the booked rooms with view for the lake, and they were actually in a concentration camp. There was no lake and there were no rooms. Uh, so about this, how we can be very easily deceited um, by words and by images, this is also what Austerlitz is, is, all, uh, is all about. And this also connects with, uh, with Perec. Uh, Perec, for example, has one, uh, one of his uh, most known books is in English, The Void, La Disparition, in, uh, in the original French, uh, where uh, he doesn't use the letter E in almost uh, or 500 pages. Um, and as we know, the letter E is in, uh, in French, one of, like in Portuguese, one of the most important letter, probably. So this letter is, 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 um, is not there. It's, uh, it, he uses always words that don't use the, the E, which makes the reading uh, a little bit more di difficult, but not difficult enough for the book not to be uh, interesting uh, to read. But if we think further, um, La Disparition, uh, I think the, transla the translation is brilliant in English because someone manages uh, uh, to, to translate a book without an E into English and not having the E, still not having the E. But the void is not La Disparition. The, La Disparition is the disappearance, which has the letter E, obviously. Uh, and when, when Perec uh, needed papers about um, a death certificate uh, for his mother, who had been... Um, arrested not by the Germans, but by the French police and given to the Germans. Uh, she was arrested and taken to Trancy, which was a French concentration camp, uh, and then turned over to, to go back home to Poland and die in Auschwitz. He could not get a death certificate because there was no uh, certificate, there was no death, you know, she went up in smoke. So all he got from the uh, French authorities was an acte de disparition. So then we started reading La Disparition as a different book because there is an obvious uh, reference to that. And, and Perec never mentioned, but it's now more or less accepted theory that the missing E is for les eux, the, the others, the missing Jews in French society after the war. So society continued, uh, but it was not the same as the book can be read, but it's not the same. So what seems to be like a just a formal... Uh, exercise becomes a very powerful uh, statement in in literature, and 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 Perec is filled with those um, with those uh, hints that are you know you ha one has to really think about it where he's getting at, and there are many things that are not even uh, where we have not even uh, dis decoded what, what what he what he meant but they are there and they are in Zebald. Uh, Zebald has a has a poem uh, where he starts behind Turkenfeld the landscape so and so when we think it's a very beautiful poem about the beautiful german landscape but if we research Turkenfeld is where there was a, a ring um, uh, uh, a network of uh, concentration camps uh, and the Turkenfeld station was where the Jews were transported to, again, uh, between Kaufring, which was a, a, a working uh, camp, and, and Auschwitz. So the words have meanings, the images have meaning, and like it was said before, images don't stand alone. They really need a caption, they really need a date, uh, they really need to be uh, put up against other images uh, because they're only they can they can be transformed for anything, and the images are always made with an agenda. Uh, I mean, the more there are no innocent photographers, even if it's only to take a picture of a baby, he wants the baby to look uh, more beautiful than it is usually, but there is always a, an agenda. And we cannot be innocent uh, uh, about that. You know, if, if we take a picture from from below, we want the the act to look more magnificent. We want to like the act to look more uh, powerful. And even even if it's an unconscious or instinctive agenda, it is still an agenda. So now I'll move on because 
I can't see people looking at watches. <laughs> so this is, like I said, this is the whole the whole book of uh, of Austerlitz transformed in, in, into images. Uh, obviously, these images could be other images. Uh, some images could be different if I will do it now because I know more than I knew when I did the work, and and so forth. But for every classification, there is an image. When Zebald writes about a specific uh, parrot, there is a specific parrot. There, uh, when he's, he writes about um, the moon maps, there is uh, there are the moon maps by Cassini and so forth. And, and just an example of how extraordinary I think Zebald's at some point is up in there in the middle we have those double double pages from Austerlitz, which is almost at the middle of the book. And when we're reading, we're in the in the billiard room uh, at some estate um, at uh, Andromeda Lodge, and uh, Austerlitz is uh, they, uh, Zebald is writing about the moon, and uh, but we're in the billiard room, so. When we leave the page, we suddenly see the full moon up there between the two moon maps. But I think it's immediate for every reader, he sees the full moon. And then he glances at the left sides, and there is a dark full moon, a black full moon. And we suddenly understand this is actually a two billiard balls, two planets on a billiard table. And we were completely full. I, I, I don't think any reader of Austerlitz is not fooled by this, by this image. Uh, and I think... We can we can see Zebald also as an artist who was working with images and text and not necessarily as a as a writer and so forth. So it mixes images from archives, uh, my own images, images from postcards, as you can see, images from the internet, obviously, which is the biggest archive of them all. And I'm not going to go into it too much. Toute la mémoire du monde, that the film uh, by René about um, the French National uh, Library, which uh, Austerlitz mentions, Zebald mentions, and gave the name uh, to to the show. Although I added the part one because all the memory of the world is is impossible I, uh, in each. One of you is a memory of the world. The memory is always changing and evolving, and it would be ridiculous to think about all the memory of memory of the world. Uh, but in the in the in the film, the, the books are treated as prisoners, like the like the prisoners in uh, in in Theresienstadt uh, were used, and 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 that is, is is really interesting because you can see the process of a book that is entering the. The, the library, and it is a fake book. The book that they show never existed. It's a Chris Macher book on, uh, on Mars, on, on a planet, uh, from his travel um, collection, Petite Planète. Uh, so they, they fake the book, which I think is really interesting, and I still wonder if the fake book is actually in the library, still in the catalogs. Mm. But it never, it never existed. But the books are treated as, as prisoners who will never leave, uh, which will never leave the 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 premises of the of the library again, but then and and Zebald goes goes into it, uh, and again Austerlitz stands for another thing. Austerlitz, the quay, the Austerlitz near the the Austerlitz station in Paris, not only is a place where many Jews were taken from, but it's also the place where the new uh, uh, Bibliothèque Nationale was built. Um, by uh, by Mitterrand, uh, and it is exactly on top of what used to be uh, warehouses, where the Germans and the French collected all the uh, possession, all the Jewish possessions from Paris and from France, to be transported to to Germany. So again, Austerlitz has another significance. You know, it was a place of hoarding all these um, house uh, interiors from all the people that were killed, but their, um, their material uh, property was still used for, uh, for, for, to, for deco redecorating houses in, in, in Germany, so much so that the German uh, went there to choose uh, stuff as in, a, in, as in a shop, 
and uh, the warehouse was called uh, Galerie Austerlitz, uh, ironically, by the, by the inmates uh, opposed to Galerie uh, Lafayette, the famous shopping um, mall, the shop in, in, uh, in Paris. Uh, why Charlot? <laughs> uh, amazingly or not, when I started to do this, I, I, I felt there was a connection between Perec and Zebald, and there are many connections in between that I have uh, find out. But the most amazing and the most obvious is that actually there is one, and it's true, Charlie Chaplin. Because um, when, when um, Perec leaves um, Paris uh, to flee from the Germans, he's uh, six years old. He's put on the train uh, by his mother in the Gare de l'Est. It's the last time he sees his mother. He will never see his mother again. So this is a, a traumatic experience that he doesn't speak of. Uh, he mentions in, in, in W or the memory of her childhood three times, but very each of the three times very, very briefly and without any sentiment at all. Um, so it, it speaks about the unspeakable uh, very, very much. But he remembers that his mother bought him a, a Charlie Chaplin uh, a magazine for, for him for the trip, in which on the cover, Charlie Chaplin, Charlot, is um, jumping from, uh, from a parachute. In, uh, in uh, Austerlitz, which, like I said, is a story of uh, Mr. Austerlitz, who is put on a train in Prague on the Kinder transport, the Red Cross transport, uh, to save Jewish children um, from the Germans. He remembers not his mother, because you, you will also not see his mother again, but his mother cannot leave the house anymore because of the occupation rules for, um, for Jews. Uh, so it's his neighbor, uh, Vera, who brings him to the station and gives him a Charlie Chaplin magazine. So I'm sure this is not a coincidence. Uh, the book, uh, Perec's book is in the in Zebald's estate in the Deutsche Literatur Arch uh, Archive, uh, in the archives in German. So Zebald was actually paying homage to, to Perec. Um, not that we can be sure of that, but I'm very confident about that. But there is another, is another uh, history to that, I think. Um, I don't think Perec's memory is, the, is, a, is, a, is a true memory because I don't think you could buy uh, Charlie Chaplin magazines in 1940 Paris after Charlie Chaplin had been on the list on the Hollywood, uh, wrongly because he was not a Jew, but he was on the Hollywood Jew list uh, the Germans had made already in 1933. Uh, he was kicked, practically kicked out of Berlin on his visit to Berlin in, in the early 30s before the Nazis were even... Uh, in power, he was he was very well received, but then he was kicked out by the by the press, and he had just finished uh, the Great Dictator, which is, as you all know, uh, a wonderful um, comedy on Hitler. So, even if you could buy a Charlie Chaplin magazine in a Paris station at that point, would you give it to a Jewish child who is? pretending not to be Jewish and fleeing the German occupier. So I think Perec's memory is completely uh, false. Uh, I think it's on purpose false. Uh, and that what makes me think it's on purpose false, uh, it's because Charlie Chaplin is actually parachuting. And this has might have two meanings, uh, or both meanings, or no, none at all. Um, when, when Perec was then in the French army much later, he was a parachuter. So somehow he's putting a, a, a memory of the past already jumping into the future. And then what could be more appropriate uh, for his last goodbye of his mother as a, as a small child than a parachute jump? He's jumping into the void, literally. He's left alone in the world and he's propelled out of, out of his childhood in the most brutal uh, way. And, I, and obviously, I'm more than sure than that Zebal knew that this must have been a false memory. And Zebal knew that you could not possibly buy a, a Charlie Chaplin magazine in Prague at that time. The magazine exists, as you can see, but 
the, 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 the older one, the Aventura Acrobatic Cello, is from, the, uh, from 1935, and so it's uh, six years before uh, Perec was put on the train. So it's improbable that it was still to be sold, to be sold at, uh, at the station after six years. And then it was, uh, and then there was another version in the 50s uh, when the magazine reappeared uh, in 57, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that Perec, I'm sure, saw uh, in the kiosks at, uh, at that time. So what, what connects this is a, is, is a false memory, which I think is very interesting because most of our memories are, in fact, false because they are uh, subjective. I mean, if we all speak about what happened this morning here in the afternoon, you know, I remember uh, two great talks and you might only remember one. Uh, so memory is always is shifting and it's shifting as we grow up. It's shifting as we get older. And I mean, we can, we can feel that every day. And memory, like Nichols also pointed out um, with the statues in London, memory is made by conquerors, is made by victors, is made by state, uh, is, made, is made by powerful men. Uh, mostly, even if they're historians, it's addressed and and molded in a way. Uh, and 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 you were talking about um, colonization, uh, and I was thinking about the Portuguese colonization that we have not even begun to to be aware of, uh, and 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 to discuss it in a, in a real way that brings us takes us further than than the usual discourse we always heard that Portuguese colonialism was much softer than uh, British or, uh, or French or German colonialism, which is bullshit, obviously. Anyhow, I did this, uh, this uh, panel, this, um, this work, and uh, long before I, 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 show, I, I showed it uh, publicly, I showed it to a to friend, an artist friend, because I needed an opinion uh, about the work and so on. And the first thing he said, oh, that's a swastika, and I hadn't noticed, and it is a swastika. And, and, and this was unintentional, it, it, it just happened. So, um, so the panels are reinforce this idea that images, in a way, are all connected, and so is memory, and so is culture. So, the, so, so this panel, which is, is actually called All the Memory of the World One, not part one, but, but one, tries in, in, to deal with all this with all this knowledge and these common um, uh, links uh, that bring all together. We have, and, and, and just as an example, up there is uh, Bruges la Mort. Uh, and Bruges la Mort is a novel which was the first novel in the world to use uh, photography. Not the first book to use photography but the first fiction book to use photography as an enhancement, as an extra, uh, and um, not in the same way, but in the same way that Zeebald uh, used photography to enhance, to bring, uh, to, to create a, a door to his, to his words, in a, or a window to his words. So it's the first novel, it's the first fiction that uses photography. It's a story, it's a very simple story, it's a story of a man who loses his wife, he's very sad, he walks down the street, he sees a prostitute who looks exactly like his wife, he takes his, the prostitute home, and he marries the prostitute, who obviously is not his wife, so the story is not very, very happy. But this story might remind you of something, and it it does, because it was uh, adapted later as a, a, a French uh, a story, as a French book, uh, almost pulp fiction, I would say, but not really, but anyhow, called Sueur Froide, pardon my French, and Sueur Froide was adapted by Hitchcock to be Vertigo, about a woman who lived twice, which brings us back to Austerlitz, a man who cannot remember where he was born, and he cannot remember his past, and he's in search of it, so he lives, in fact, twice. He's, he has two different names, and, 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 and so forth. So Suez Freud is Vertigo, Madeleine. We, have all seen, we all have seen Madeleine. Madeleine is not called Madeleine by chance, obviously, it goes back to Proust. Uh, but already in the Bruges la Morte, 
and, and up there are images from Rouge la Mort. We have, the we have the tower from which Madeleine will jump in the Hitchcock film. So the tower is already there. Half the script is already in Bruges la Mort, which is from 18-something. Um, Vertigo is the, ti is, the, is the English title for one of Zebald's book, books. Uh, and in, in Oselitz, for example, when, when the narrator meets Oselitz, he's at the bar at the Antwerp train station, and the woman with the, he compares with the goddess of uh, memory, uh, wears the, the, the hair like that, like Madeleine, uh, in Vertigo. And we could go on, we could go on to Chris Marker, to um, Chris Marker, who, was, who worked with uh, Alain René in, uh, in All the Memory of, uh, of the World, to La Mémoire du Monde, but also in the first film uh, on concentration camps, Night and Fog, uh, that Alain René did uh, in 1940. Missing now the date, but anyhow, it's the, fir it's the first film, which only, mer uh, and I think it's important to be said, only mentions, as most of the works done at that point uh, did, only mentions the Jews once. Because the war and the Holocaust was not sufficient to create empathy in the general public for the Jews. So they decided not to mention the Jews, uh, and to mention the Jews as Poles, as French, as Germans who had died, because that people would feel much more identified, because the Jews were them. This to say that anti-Semitism, which is a form of racism, and racism is the same thing, it's not something that goes away, uh, not even by something as big as the, um, or as tragic as the Holocaust. It stays, it goes on, it goes down, it goes up. Uh, but it was already noticeable uh, after the war in, in, this, in these works. Uh, same with the film that was presented uh, last year that Hitchcock supposedly had worked on, uh, on the concentration camps. Uh, the film was shown in, in, in some cinemas. I went to see it in Lisbon. It mentions the Jews once. And I think this is really important because this is 1950-something. Uh, the Holocaust had just happened. And this history was already being changed, you know. And, 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 and I think that to, make, to, be, to be aware of this makes all the difference uh, about, uh, about how we face, uh, how we face the, the, the world. Anyhow, uh, so this is all possible connections. Uh, Marie and Bad was based on a script uh, of the invention of Morel, a book by a surrealist book by Boy Cazares about an island uh, that has a lot to do with the Perec book. I'm not even going to go into that because then we don't have lunch. Um, the the book by by Morel is about an island uh, where people are projected. They, they are dead, but they are continuously projected um, in, in, in time and space, which brings many uh, analogies uh, to cinema. And this panel is uh, called The Invention of Morelic because of that. These are uh, stills from three different, the three different versions that were made from that book. So it has the same scenes, but with different actors. And the, mo the most known is obviously uh, Marine Bat, also done by Alain René. Um, but, but, but it's different actors, act, actors doing exactly the same thing. And Marine Bad, it's about a summer, uh, the main actress, the main uh, protagonist cannot remember, last summer in, uh, in, in Marine Bad. And, in, uh, and there is an, an even uh, a reference to that in, in, um, in Austerlitz because Vera, the neighbor, says, when she left uh, the child at the station, she remembered, just last summer, we departed from here to Marine Bat. Um, and then how things could change that quickly. One year later, the child is going away forever, and no Jew will be going to Marine Bat in the, in the, in the next years. Uh, a, a, different, a different panel, I tried to translate uh, words into images, meaning when, when I say the word library, each one of us thinks 
of a library as a concept, but each one of us also thinks of a different library, and that I think it's 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 very interesting and very very relevant. We all have visual images for words, but we all thinking the same. We all we're thinking about the function, uh, and 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 that brings us to architecture. And there are some panels on it about that how architecture molds not only the words but molds people. And 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 Perec and Zebald are very much aware of that about schools, reformatories. Exiles, army barracks, uh, and, and, and dormitories, where the, the, the personal is stripped and is also is a long line, but in the end we have prisons, and then in a further line we have concentration camps and so forth. Everything that strips us of our personality, everything that molds us into, we're all equal, we all, uh, it starts with uniforms or we lose our clothes and we all look alike if our hair is shaven and so forth and so forth. Where we are stripped of our personal um, history and our personal memory and our personal way and somebody talked about style, of our personal style. We are humans, but we are also nothing but humans. So and I think I should finish here if there are any questions. Thank you.